What's up, Beaks? This is Michael from Technically Beekeeping. Yeah, a lot of beginner books on beekeeping will tell you about either drilling holes into a lid uh, for a jar feeder inside of a hive or using a penny nail or a common nail to poke the holes into the jar. I've never seen a great resource on which drill bits to use, what sizes are the right sizes, which ones will leak. thought I would do a little experiment today. I'm curious to see what the optimal hole sizes are. Let's take a look. For those of you that are new to beekeeping, bee feed is normally a mix of one part water and one part uh, sugar. So it's mixed in a, a warm bath of water. Uh, normally you don't want to get it boiling, but it get, gives sort of this yellowish color. It's not red like that. I'm just using food dye to, to be able to show the difference there. And then you poke holes in the top of the lid in order for you to be able to put it on top of a inner cover that looks like this. And then the bees are able to come up and feed from that. Depending on the time of year, beekeepers will use different recipes sometimes. Uh, they'll add, have additives that they add, like honeybee healthy, amino bee. There's all different types of recipes out there on the internet, depending on how cold it is, how hot it is, what the needs of the bees are. Here I'm just using one-to-one -one sugar water, which is pretty common. Let's talk real quick about the physics of jar feeding. When you turn this over, you'll see that it actually leaks quite a bit. And oftentimes when I do this, I'll do this in a field do it not over the, the beehive itself, and then I'll carry it like this over to the beehive and then put it on the beehive so that I don't get any of the bees wet. If the bees get wet and it's cold outside, it can, it can hurt the bees. So we want to make sure that we're doing this in such a way to minimize the amount of drippage that comes out when you're feeding your bees. So as you can see here, it stopped dripping altogether. Because there's a vacuum that's been created on the top, you see this air bubble so the way this air bubble works is similar to the fluid dynamics of a gas can. So gas cans are built with vents in the back. They're, they're made with vents in order to break this vacuum that you see here. If it didn't have that vent on a gas can, you would end up with the same situation where a vacuum forms and you can't get any gas out of the can. So it's a fun trick of physics. And what we're going to experiment with today is to see what the optimal hole size is in order to keep this vacuum sealed. So here you see all the materials we'll be using today. So you see all of the lids, they range from 1.6 millimeters to 9.5 millimeters as far as the hole size. So each of these varies slightly until you get to 9.5 millimeters. Then a lot of beekeepers will also suggest that you just use a, a typical thumbtack to pierce the lid in order to make a jar feeder. Oftentimes they'll, they'll have many more holes than that, but I'm trying to stick to a five hole pattern in order to test everything fairly uniformly. Then I've also got the box nails, which box nails are oftentimes used for constructing beehives. So these are oftentimes suggested by beekeepers to use in order to pierce the lids to create a bee feeder. Then also there's the common nail, which is one of the most common nails in the United States to use. The diameter of the box nail is the closest to the 3.2 millimeter hole, and also the common nail is closest to the 3.6 millimeter hole. I've also got red food dye. I'm using that to dye this water and also the feed to be able to see it better. And so all of the sizes that you see here are fairly common drill bit sizes in the United States. So as far as being able to use this information, hopefully it's very useful for you. So Beaks, here's my setup. It's just some scrap wood that I had out in the garage, put it together, drilled the holes in the middle. They're the standard size for an inner cover hole. So on one side, I will put the water. And on the other side, I will put the feed and just see how many drips that I have coming down with different lids that I would put on. Uh, obviously, you would never put food coloring in your feed or in your water if you were giving it to the bees. Five minutes in and the 1.6 millimeter, 1 16th inch feed and water. Neither of them have any drippage. That's a good sign. It's really telling us that beyond putting it onto the hive, which the bees will clean up very quickly, you're not going to get a constant drip of liquid, which is what you definitely want to avoid. Yeah, let me show you the other side of it, where the bees would be drinking out of. So you can see that it's beating up. That would be where the bees would come up and suck it out of the drips there. Uh, that's on the feed side and then on the water side. Thumbtack. I don't see anything on it at all, which is good. We are at five minutes with the 2.0 millimeter. So far, so good. We have our first drippage on the water side. All right, 
3.2 millimeters is the first that the feed is starting to actually leak. 3.6, a little bit on both. Feed is leaking quite a bit now, uh, 4.0. 4.4, you're seeing that it's definitely leaking a great deal more. 5.2, 5.6 millimeter, 6.4. Eight millimeters, you can't keep a vacuum. So this is definitely the upper limit. So let's look at the result. The smaller holes that end up having less splatter. We've got the ones in the middle that certainly have quite a bit. Somewhere between 6.4 millimeters and 8 millimeters is the point at which there's an absolute failure to be able to create a vacuum. At 8.0, the feed just falls out of the container. Anything above 5.6 seems to have that time bomb effect. The time bomb effect is where it looks stable until it's not, and it just drops its entire load into the hive. So I would stay away from anything above 5.2. One of the things that I found to be notable is with the 1.6 millimeters and also with the thumbtack, both of them, when you would turn them over, put it onto the feeder hole, it was much more manageable as far as the streams that would come out. Now that being said, typically when you're working with either of these sizes, you're going to be punching many, many more holes than this in order to feed the bees faster. Uh, so that's something that I may experiment with more in the future, is to try to see what that optimal uh, number is and which uh, the bees take faster. So one of the things that surprised me was that you can see here, here, and here, there was no drippage at all. And I was actually expecting all of these to be fairly uniform, starting with this to be more and more and more until you finally get at, got up to the point of failure. In reality, what happened is, as long as you kept it fairly level, you didn't actually have a drip. I, I expected that you would have a constant dripping that would go faster and faster and faster as you got bigger and the sizes, that actually didn't seem to happen. So this is what I call a bump test. I bump the platform three times in a row and see what the resulting splatter looks like. It's a little subjective because I could be hitting it a little stronger, a little weaker. It'd be nice to do this with a, some kind of a mechanical tool. But in this case, you can see a little bit of a pattern here. What I'm trying to simulate here is, for example, you go up to the hive, you're working on the hive, and you bump it or you uh, take off the cover, how much spillage are you going to be expecting to come into the, the hive itself as you're working on it? I would say safe levels were 1.6, thumbnail, uh, box nail even, and common, but certainly not 4.0 and 6.0 millimeter. I found the bigger size holes to be a little deceptive in that when you test it on the platform in a very stable environment, if you get it completely right, you don't get a whole lot of drippage. But what you can see here from the bump test is, as soon as you bump, bump the platform, you get a massive amount of spillage. This would likely end up being a lot of dead bees. Same with this one as well. Hey Beaks, thanks for going on this journey with me. It's something I've been curious about since I began beekeeping. 